Welcome to the installation video of ArchBang Linux. Beta version 2020, April 16th. We'll be using the UEF5 partition scheme. First thing, you go to distrowatch.com and then you put ArchBang. And then from here, you scroll down a little bit. It says homepage. You click on the first link, SourceForge. And then you click on the second tab where it says files and then you click where it says archbang and you will see the iso to download now i already downloaded the iso so i will not do it a second time let me just minimize this i will be using vmware workstation this is my personal preference you can use um, hyper-v virtual box if you have a mac vmware fusion Two virtual CPUs, 4 gig of RAM and 20 gig hard drive is more than enough for this demonstration. Let me start this. The screen is a little bit small, it's 800 by 600. And because this is a high definition video, I will just stretch it. So I will click on view and stretch. It will be a little bit better. Hit enter. Now, from this, normally what I would just do is just right click anywhere and go under installers and say install ArchBang. When you do that, it's a little bit blurred. I can pretty much make it a little bit bigger, but it's not a true 1080p. It's a stretch 800 by 600. So what I've done is I created a script, which is out of scope for this demo, that will uh, allow the screen to be bigger. So if you don't mind, I will just run the script here. It won't, it won't take too long. Now, this script is not available in the original ISO that you downloaded. As you can see, the screen is much better. It's more crisp. And what I will do is I will expand much better. So now here, what I will do is I will choose a partition scheme. This is pretty much the most important part in order for this ArchBag installation to work successfully. So please do not change any options of what I'm about to show you. You press one and then you select default. Press number three for FDisk and then choose one. From this, you have to choose G to say it's the GPT partition and for new. And please do not put anything. Just hit enter, enter. And the last sector is plus 512M. Enter. Press N again. Enter, enter, plus 14.5G. Enter. N again. Enter, enter, enter. Now, if you press P for print, it will show you three partitions. But as you can see, they all say Linux file system, and we need to change that. We need to identify successfully those partitions. To do that, you press the letter T. And when you do that, it's going to ask you which partition. Let's start with the first one. And the partition types, let's press L for what's available. And I will choose the EFI system. However, to get out of this menu, you have to press Q first, then you choose number one. So if you press P, you will see that it is an EFI system. Now, the third one is my swap partition. I've chosen five gig because I just like to use the memory size of the VM plus one gig. So again, I will choose the letter T to change and the default is three. So I just have to press enter. Partition type. Again, I do not know the list by heart. It is 19. So I press Q, 19. And I will do print. As you can see, we have all three partitions. 
all done successfully. So I will press W. And now it's going to ask for the root partition. My root partition is number two. Do you want to format it? Yes. Now, by default, when Linux kernels are compiled, ext4 is pretty much always there. So just to be on the safe side, I will press number four. And then my EFI partition is the first one here. And I will choose the first one, boot EFI. And I say yes. Do you want to confirm? Yes. And now for the swap file system, I've chosen the partition type and I choose number one again. Do you want to format it? Yes. Enter. Perfect. Now let's go to the install archbang. I will press number two. Now this will take a while. So what I will do is I will pause the recording of this video and just continue when it's going to be near 100%. Now we're very close to 100% and now we are over. <laughs> I'm not sure why under my virtual environment it goes to 178%. It is what it is. So let's just wait until it goes to 178. And all done. Now let's choose the host name. So me, I will just choose Archbang. I just like to put that Linux number four time zone. I will choose America and Toronto. This is where I am. Yes. Hardware clock, press number five and choose UTC. And then six for local. And I will choose a good old ENUSA 92. And now it will build the init RAM FS. This doesn't take too long. And I will choose the desktop keyboard layout, number seven. And for me, it's US and it's a yes. Now the bootloader. So I will choose grub two and automatic. Enter. We're almost done. Put the root password. Make sure it is something you will remember. And then create user. I suggest you put everything in lowercase as the username is case sensitive. And press done and say yes. And on this, I will just press enter. Again, the screen is stretched. So what I will have to do after I log in is to run my script again to have a 1080p resolution. Now here, it is really important. Do not log in as root. You have to put the user that you've created. The installation is almost completed. Before I continue, like I said, I will just run my script in order to have a 1080p resolution. Now this will take a little bit longer than the other one. So what I will do is pause the video and continue near its completion. And it's all done. So what I will do is I will just close this. Now I will create a new terminal session. I will put this bigger. Shift control plus. Now, those are the commands that you need to do in order to update and install Arch Linux repository software and make sure it's, everything is up to date. First thing first, let's do a command to edit your mirror for your repos. 
and for me I'm located in Canada so I will just go here and just remove the pound sign and I will save it and after that I need to do this command which is sudo pacman init and after that I have to populate that key and finally I just need to update my keyring yes I'm going to clear this and that's it so let's say I want to install Vim yes it works great if I go to my applications you will see Vim has been installed and this concludes the installation of Archbank Linux if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to click on the like button and you may want to subscribe as well to this channel take care